Hello again, it's April here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be probably super chill. I don't know how long this will be. It's going to be a swatching with maybe a paint, paint, painting thing at the end. Uh, it's Sunday morning right now, it's about 11ish. And I actually have to get a train at 3.30. So this may not come out on Monday. If it's Tuesday, hi. <laughs> Hi, one day late, but it's not a problem. At least I have a video out this week. I'm trying to get one out every week. Uh, trying to get back into the schedule of making them. So today, I'm going to be looking at these Posca pencils, which I never even knew existed until about a week ago. Uh, basically, what I've been doing, if you've seen anything on Instagram uh, lately, I've been using these paint pens, the Liquitex paint pens, and also the Molotow paint pens, Molotow, Molotow. And I love them a lot, but I have been noticing some of them, uh, when they're quite thick, they dry really glossy and then it's quite hard for the coloured pencil to go over the top of them. So I did this little test the other day and I basically got out a lot of blue pencils, all different brands, and I put them over. And this is in the Royal Talons sketchbook, so I think the paper soaks up the paint quite a bit. So it may not be the most accurate challenge. But basically, I've been using this one here. It's a Jackson, Jackson's Arts watercolour sketchbook. And so like on this blue building here, you can see the pencil doesn't really go on very well. So I did that test and I popped on Instagram just to like show people the different pencils and how they go on the paint. And about three or four people messaged me and said, that the Posca pencils work really well over paint pens. I don't know if they meant paint pens specifically or just paint, but I have never knew they existed. And it does make sense that a company that makes paint pens would make pencils that go over them. So we're gonna give them a go. The oil based is a pack of 36 and I was gonna get them individually. The only place I could find them that did them individually in the UK was Cass, no, uh, Colt pens, I think. Um, but, I was like, let's just get the whole pack <laughs> because um, I like buying things. I like art supplies, what can I say? So let's jump into it. So like I mentioned before, this is the Real Talons Art Creation Sketchbook in A4. And this sketchbook I've been using for uh, doing things with color, looking at all of my different materials. Um, some like random sketches and also some exercises from the Good Ship illustration course. So I probably won't ever do a sketchbook tour of this just because it's so, it's just like, I mean maybe I will, maybe I'll do like a quick one. This one I really like, but anyway, we're not doing anything with that today. We're going to do some swatching. So I've got this page here, it's a bit dirty already, but it's just for swatching so it'll be fine. And here are the pencils, they come in this nifty little tin, which I'm going to get rid of straight away. Because I've learned that if I put anything, if I don't put anything out, I don't use it. So I'm going to use them for now in order that it's in the box. But afterwards I'll find a pencil um, pin or a cup or something to use. Cool. Alright, so 36 colours. They do look quite bright and vibrant. So we'll see how... We'll see how they go. I am I am moving more towards muted tones th these days, like this kind of pale one, maybe an olive green, maybe um I don't know, maybe this cream colour. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we like if you like them. This is just gonna be on paper and like I mentioned, oh wow, look at that white, so invisible. Uh like I mentioned, this paper isn't the best, the quality isn't great, and it does seem to soak in the paint quite a lot. Oh, that's a lovely pale colour. So the t feel of them is quite um, smooth. You can definitely feel that there's something on the page. I don't know if you guys ever do that, if you like feel how something goes onto the page. So like if I go over here, th this set of pencils are all luminance and you can't really, like I can feel the indentation but I can't feel like a greasiness. But when I put it over here, I can feel kind of like, it must be the oil in the pencil. I was going to do something different today with my swatches, but... Uh, so classic circles, you can't go wrong. So for the names of these, it doesn't look like they have 
names which is one thing oh look they have numbers okay cool so they have numbers here i don't know if you can see but this one says three on here yeah for a second there i thought i didn't have a name or a number and that would have been a bit awkward to like figure out later on down the line Okay, this one so far is my favourite colour that I've swatched. Number 14. I wish they had I wish they had names. I do love um pencils or art art materials with names. Like Karen Dash has some really nice names. And also if you guys know Paper Artsy, the paint company, they have really cool names for their paints. This is a nice pink. I mean, so far these coloured pencils just seem like regular coloured pencils. I wouldn't say anything too special about them, but obviously I haven't seen how they mix with other stuff yet. But the colours all seem pretty normal. Very vibrant though, which is nice. Alright, this one I'm holding out hopes for because I have been enjoying a dark blue pencil. But this one is a little bit on the green side for me. Maybe the next one? Nope, that one's too blue. <laughs> I've been really fussy with uh, blues lately. I kind of like the unsaturated blue. These are all very, very vibrant. You know what I wonder? I wonder if the colours of the pencils match the colours of the Posca pens. That would be very interesting to find out. that's all the colours I think definitely so far my favourites are this like earthy kind of red this uh, yellow ochre the olive greens this peach and this grey so basically what I've really been drawn to for the last few weeks no change there I think we will try and get a nice thick layer of a couple of colours and see how they work also try um, acrylic wash just because I have it right next to me I'll do the paper artsy this is the one I mentioned earlier this one's called magic moss pretty cool color huh pretty cool name and this is acrylic but it dries super super matte unlike uh, like an, another acrylic like a De La Rowney or something <laughs> that is so thick Probably shouldn't have poured it onto the page. Oh well. You'll live, you'll learn. And while this is drying, I'll write all the numbers down. And then, yeah, we can do some tests. I've done a little uh, splodge on the watercolour sketchbook. And look, you can kind of see on this paper, it's soaked it in so much. And here, it's going to dry with a nice glossy, thick finish. So this will be a good test here.
So I did some tests on this paper, but uh, like I mentioned before, it soaks right in, so the tests aren't very conclusive. I got these guys down here on my watercolour paper, and I'm going to try a dark colour and a light colour and a medium colour. So let's see what they're like. This is the ochre, like a yellow ochre colour, and it is quite, like if I just press really lightly there, you can see it's kind of being repelled by the paint, while it's over here, you can see a bit more where the paint pen's thinner. So... A lot of the time I do line up on top of the paint like for trees and things and buildings and then also I will scribble over for bushes and things shadow so it does go on I mean they're kind of having the same effect as the Caran d'ache but they are working pretty well I'd say they are working a bit better than Caran d'ache and we can test that out now So, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. I think I'd have to do a whole piece before I had any, like, proper conclusive evidence of one being better than the other. But, yeah, so far so good. This one is, like, a lighter colour. And you can see where it's, where it's uh, dried darker. That's where it's a bit more glossy. So I do this. Is going over the glossy bit and the non-glossy bit pretty well. Yeah, I think this one, I think these will work pretty well. Well, anyone made to find out? Let's try a whole picture. Hello, it's voiceover April here. I didn't record, uh, any voice for this part of the painting because I was actually having an art chat with someone and uh, yes we were chatting so <laughs> this is the voiceover part of the video uh, I haven't done the voiceover for ages I'm a little bit rusty uh, I have mentioned this in previous videos that I definitely prefer talking to the camera rather than voiceover I don't know why voiceover makes me so nervous so if I sound weird, that's why. Basically, I'm just gonna let you know a little bit of the process here uh, that I started. So I picked all the colors that I mentioned before. I have that lovely moss green in the background. This sketch that I'm doing right now, I believe is from Buttermere Lake. I could be wrong. Uh, I, get, I get all of my photos mixed up sometimes in my mind. I do think it is Buttermere, I remember now. And uh, I thought it would be a good idea to do the darker green in the background because in the photo, the mountains actually were a darker color. Uh, I think they're probably made from different rocks, like different rocks are exposed maybe. But in painting in general, I think the rule is as you move backwards, things get less saturated and they get um, lighter. Uh, don't quote me on that <laughs> because I'm not an expert. Uh, and at the end of this painting, I do mention how I don't actually like this green, but I uh, was editing this video this morning and looking at it again, I don't think it's terrible. These colors definitely, I don't think I would have chosen these colors if I hadn't been using these colored pencils. I did find the colored pencils a little bit difficult to use, not because of the way they drew. I think they actually draw really nice. If I'm gonna do a tiny little mini review now, I would say they're really super cr uh, creamy, is that a word? They're oil-based, so they are soft-ish. <laughs> I really should learn about art materials before I try and review them. Um, this is an impression, not a review. That They went nicely on the page. They, because they're a bit softer, they did um, need sharpening quite a bit because also this is a watercolour sketchbook so the texture eats away at the pencil quite a bit. But uh, they sharpen beautifully, much better than the Caran d'Ache and I thought it was my sharpener because I have been trying to do my Caran d'Ache luminance pencils with this, this sharpener that I have and they've it's been catching, it hasn't been sharpening well at all and I thought the blade was old but I used these pencils and they sharpen 
beautifully. I don't know if it's because they have that um, black material on them. It's like smoother or something. I don't know. Anyway, I ended up using this red pencil for some reason. I didn't really have a dark green pencil and I tried to use darker colors for like the line art and stuff. Uh, I don't think this is the best color choice to use. I think red as a color is quite in your face and quite, um, I don't know, I, I, kind of like harsh, if you kind of get that. Uh, I don't think it works very well with this, especially with the green. I think using red and green traditionally <laughs> could be seen quite Christmassy. Um, I don't think this looks Christmassy at all, but I did find using the red as an outline um, was, yeah, it didn't really gel with me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I ended up using some of my new colors. The colors of, were very similar to the pencils, so not really kind of much to show there. I just, I like adding these as a little bit of texture at the end. And ever since using them, I feel like a piece isn't really finished unless I pop a little bit of neo color on. So uh, voiceover April will go and uh, we'll pop back into the past and see what I think about this. All right, I have been, well, I did the first one, I'm not that happy with it to be honest. Not sure if these colors go together, especially this, the green and the hills. I do like the pink with the light green and the orange, but I think this dark green in the background, which is the moss green, uh, magic moss, sorry. I just, I think, I think it matches the rest. So I did a little um, play with them. They do go over okay. You can kind of see here where it was a bit glossier. They kind of smushed a little bit. Um, but yeah, on the trees they look pretty good. So I also tried this new thing that I'm trying where I take like the path, there are paths at like, the mountains, but then I kind of make it up and make like almost like contour lines. I don't know. I don't know. That's just something I'm trying. But yeah, this is the first one. It's really hard to get the entire sketchbook on camera because it's so long. But I think um, I'll leave it there for today. So I gotta go get my train in about an hour. So I'm gonna call it a day for this one. So I think on Tuesday morning I can maybe do another one, but uh, maybe mix up the colors a little bit and try and show a bit more of the pencil going on the paint. Uh, I think that'll be good. Just to like have a, another little practice. But I'll see you for the next one. Okay, goodbye now. I have to go to London. Bye, bye. It's a seven hour train journey. Bye, okay, bye. So this is the next day now. I actually did these upstairs in my office, which is why the desk is a little bit different. Um, I did them in the morning and I tried to switch up the colors. I used exactly the same colors, but I tried to switch them up a little bit on each of the pages. So on one page, I did a kind of straight from a photo and then on this page, I actually just wanted to do a whole bunch of different houses. So I used the houses from the photo, but I made them all big and I made them all like together. And I just popped all of this random color in between for the bushes and trees. I wasn't really thinking anything. This is kind of like as close as my imagination as I come to draw in. And then on this side of the page, I didn't want to use that red pencil again. So I tried the brown pencil which is not a bad pencil with these colors. I think the colors work really well together, but using the brown as an outline, I think dulled down the painting quite a bit. And I think that's because I'm used to using brighter colors for my outlines. Even when I do digital art, if you've seen any of my digital art I've done, I haven't done any for ages, but when I do outlines, I even change the colors, almost like multicolored. So I did find that the brown was a little bit um, desaturated, colorless, lifeless, but I do think it works well with these colors. Um, I think it's a little bit messy, to be honest. I don't know. It, it definitely doesn't have the same quality as the images I've been doing lately. I don't know if that's because I was rushing it or just because I wasn't feeling the color palette. Um, but yeah, I kind of got through it quite fast and I moved on to this side and I decided to go back again with the red because I wasn't really feeling that brown on the other side. And I think this works really well on this page. It's kind of a more graphical um, page, like fun. Um, it's not based on real life at all, kind of just like all these buildings and different perspectives jumbled together. 
So uh, yeah, that's basically what I did. And I've been getting into the ha kind of uh, this habit of drawing tr skeleton trees in blobs of color. I think that's mainly because I miss winter. <laughs> I really like drawing the trees in the winter and I haven't last summer and spring I was drawing all the leaves on the trees and now I'm just like Meh. I'll just draw the skeleton of the trees because it's so much easier so I ended up popping some little um, red bushes and everything in there to kind of bring it all together and both these pages are very different from each other but they were super fun to do of all three I definitely preferred these two than the previous one for the pencils, I do think they went well over the paint pens, but I will definitely need to do a few more pages before I have my conclusive results. But for now, I think I would give the Posca pens a thumbs up. Definitely fun to use and very vibrant colours if you like that kind of thing. So that was uh, the Posca video. Three pages, which is pretty cool. I hope that you enjoyed the video and my ramblings, and I will see you next week for another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.